Hello. In this video, I will discuss how to configure and troubleshoot event propagation from remote cells to a TSIM server cell. Remote cells are installed via the integration service installer as a method to distribute them in an environment. They can be installed with the integration service or standalone using the same installer. You choose which events, if any, will go to a remote cell, and you choose what events the remote cell will propagate to the TSIM server. This is not automatic. The basic requirements for propagation are the sending cell must know of the destination cell in its mcell.dir file, the port must be open from the sending cell to the destination cell, you must create a propagation rule or policy. Both are the same, the choice is in how you want to manage it. A policy is easier to manage, a custom rule is more customizable. If using a policy, you must register the remote cell on the TSIM server using the iAdmin command. This is to make the remote cell available in the admin console so that you can select it when creating the policy. The requirements for adding an entry for the TSIM cell into the remote cell's mcell.dir file are shown here. The first item to verify is the encryption key. It may not be the default value as shown here. The second item to verify is the hostname of the destination. Can this remote system resolve it? The third item to verify is the port of the destination. Can the remote system connect to this port? Note, you can typically copy the entry from the TSIM server's own mcell.dir file to the file on the remote cell. As stated before, you must create a propagation rule or policy on your remote cell to make it propagate to the TSIM cell. Your requirements could be more complex than shown here. This page just shows a basic example of each. When enabling tracing for troubleshooting propagation, you can choose to enable the minimum tracing on your sending cell, as shown here. The first entry for EVT proc tracing is to see event reception, and the second entry is to see propagate tracing. You could also choose to enable full tracing, as shown here, with a combination of all, all standard error tracing, as well as enabling rule tracing via the M control command. After troubleshooting, tracing can be disabled by resetting the trace level using all verbose no via the mconfig trace command and disable tr trace rule as shown if it had been enabled. With propagation tracing enabled, here I am showing the format of the propagation trace line that you would look for after you see your event was received. The number value after answered is the event handle that the receiving cell assigned to the event. This gives you a specific value that can be searched for at your receiving cell's trace. If there was a propagation problem, you may instead see a different entry in your logs, such as the status of wait or refused, as shown next. If you see this, then you may need to enable tracing on your receiving cell to see if it has traced anything at the time of propagation. And now for a demonstration. On the left side, I have my remote cell or sending cell, and on the right side, I have my TSIM cell or receiving cell. So I will enable logging on my sending cell for event proc, as well as propagate. And on the sent receiving side, I will enable event proc tracing. With event proc tracing enabled on my receiving cell, I will tail the trace to see what it receives. On my sending cell, I will send a test event in. And I can already see on my receiving side that it was received. In checking the logs on the sending cell, I can see the answer that was provided by the uh, receiving cell. And I can see that the answer was 13, and this matches to the event handle that has been set on the receiving cell. Thank you. That concludes the demonstration.